Hello, my name is Chris Woodpan. I'm the owner of Ingot Film Studios and I am working with Hero Time to make a bunch of videos to help you get your products ready for print. This week we're going to be talking about layers. The importance of keeping your layers organized and naming them appropriately and even organizing the color structure of the layers can be super helpful and communicate a lot of information to the person who will then receive that file. If you don't do this and you don't label your things and do things in the right order, you will wind up having to pay more for somebody to fix the work, some time for your artist to redo something. So be sure you're clear and upfront as to what your product's going to be used for. And when you submit things with layers, make sure they're clearly labeled and organized. Trust me, when you come back to this file in a year, whatever, you will appreciate having everything organized and labeled. If you don't, it's just a big mess of spaghetti. But more on that in a minute. So let's hop over into Illustrator, which is going to be the program of choice today because this one tends to get the messiest. Illustrator, like Photoshop, works in layers, and layers work in visibility. Things above things will hide things below them or cover them. So this is a project I worked on for Hero Time. It's just a little production workflow. And I just wanna kinda of go through what would this look like if I were doing this for something other than say a slideshow? What if this was going to be on business cards or the back of a box? So if you remember from the font class, one of the things we wanna do is to make sure to outline fonts and we wanna make sure we don't have to deal with sending everybody all the fonts that we do. Let's look at our document real quick. And you can see here in my layers panel, I only have three or four layers depending on a project. Now, sometimes I will have what's called a template layer. Uh, perhaps you have a like a wireframe document you're using or a sketch that you're kind of working on top of. Using a template layer is going to really, really help you with that. And all you have to do is just double click on the actual layer itself and you can see here, that it wants the template layer and then that's it. So you just hit okay and now it's a template layer, comes in locked, comes in at 50%. Other than that, I tend to have three main organization structures and that is text, imagery, and then backgrounds. And then this way I know I can always find something I need and typically I know exactly where it is. My text layer is literally just that. It's everything in this top of this document and it's all the text for it. So we talked about how to create outlines. This is where this organization system gets super sexy. Take this text layer and I can alt, hold alt and then drag it and you'll see I just made a copy. And then what I can do for that is I can call this text outlines. So the original layer is going to be all my editable text. Let's say I have a typo in here with me that's highly likely. So I want to keep that in there so I always can go back and work on it. Now this text outline layer, I'm going to click and select everything and then I'm going to hit my control shift O and that's going to create outlines for all that text. And now if I open this up, you can see in here that now one is a group and it's now a compound path. All the text is now this huge mess of compound paths, one for every letter in that text box. So this way, that is now all one file. And then just hide the other one. Now let's talk a moment about backgrounds because I've seen some crazy backgrounds in my time. And a lot of times we may want to say, drop a picture in there. Like this is just an open, opacity picture set there. Um, you may want to throw a fancy gradient in here. Like That's all fine and good until we start to do things and look at how these are represented. So let's hit control Y. And this is a wonderful trick for you to check um, both alignment of objects. Uh, this converts it to an outline mode and just gets rid of all the other color information and everything. All right. so. Let's go over here to this box. This, this box is something a client had sent us. Well, if I do a control Y, look at this. When I said spaghetti, this is what I'm talking about. 
what this is is the computer has to draw meshes think of it like mountains um, of information to create a gradient and these gradients are pretty crazy if i look here it's not really doing a ton for the box sure it's giving it a little bit of a painterly look and everything but it's a little out of control so if you're using gradients and you want a painterly back, the best thing you can do is maybe create it in Photoshop and then just import the actual image itself. Let's say I decided to get rid of this whole thing. I had that done in Photoshop. So if I'm gonna drag this on here, the integrity of this image is going to be nice and high. Think of it around you know 400 dots per inch. And now let's go put our clipping mask on and we get the same effect, but when I do my Y, it's completely clean. It's a much cleaner, meaner way to work than it is to try and move all these mesh gradients around. Yes, they're amazing and they're awesome and they're very handy, but they can also really create a big mess on the back end when somebody's trying to work on your file. So avoid doing those, uh, also avoid transparency with colors can really get very funky at times so we want to try to make sure that transparency is usually a hundred percent and if you need to add transparency layers behind again that's probably a better job for photoshop and then bring it in here so that's going to be how i manage my layers within illustrator but also within photoshop and even InDesign as i work on these programs this applies to whatever graphic program you're using. Remember to organize into four main layers. I do a background, a graphics, and a text. And then if you have a reference layer or a template layer, I keep those separate because chances are I either delete them before I export for giving it off to somebody else. And then we can just do that control shift O Boom, done. Outlines created for all your text. You will love that trick when it comes time to export your graphics, trust me. Now, the last thing is, is just make sure that your labels on all of your items make sense to the point where I even have my individual layers, the colors of the selections of those layers are all the same. So all my text is green, all my graphics are magenta. I just do that as an added layer of security so when I'm selecting things, I can instantly see that. So join us next week. We're gonna cover bringing those graphics and things into Illustrator, that way you can work with them and how to bounce back and forth. We'll cover that a little more in depth. So I hope you're enjoying the series and we'll see you soon.